Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Noah Perit, and I'm a high school student. And um, my pre presentation is entitled Indoor Positioning with Maximum Likelihood Classification of Wi-Fi Signals. So indoor positioning is a determination of one's location indoors. And there's a great need for this. Applications range from personal navigation, one of us using it for um, using you know, finding our location through a shopping mall or a parking garage, for example, manufacturing and inventory tracking, mining, fighter, firefighting, and disaster response. For example, if a first responder receives a call from a shopping mall, they want to know exactly where the call came from, and aids for the blind and visually impaired. However, despite these needs, the problem of developing a reliable indoor positioning system remains unsolved. The problem with GPS, GPS has solved outdoor navigation, and it's used today by nearly everyone. However, once you go inside, um, GPS signals are too weak to penetrate, and location no longer works. Um, people have tried using augmented GPS, where um, GPS transmitters are installed on towers to increase their signal strength. But the problem with this technique is that um, it's extremely expensive. Cell phone localization has also been attempted, but it's extremely inaccurate, up to hundreds of meters. Other approaches include RFID tags and fiduciary markers, uh, but this requires um, the installation of numerous special tags, one per location in a building, and so it remains impractical. And the problem with inertial navigation is that errors accumulate quickly, so without another, um, another location service, um, it's just impractical. So what about Wi-Fi signals? The good thing about Wi-Fi signals is that they're extremely numerous. In my house, for example, I can detect over 23 different Wi-Fi signals even though I only have two routers in my home, I'm picking up my neighbor's Wi-Fi. Um, in this shopping mall out here, um, I found over there are over 200 Wi-Fi signals. And in a larger mall, like the Columbia Mall in Maryland, um, you can have over 600 Wi-Fi signals. And um, even in underground parking garages, um, you can have um, up to 30 Wi-Fi signals and more. And so I think a lot of people don't realize how numerous Wi-Fi signals really are. The bad thing about Wi-Fi is that it undergoes extreme variation. This is because Wi-Fi signals reflect off walls. They are absorbed by some objects and reflected by others. Um, you can see in the top diagram here, this is um, signal strength over distance from the router. And you can see that as you go away, as distance increases, signal strength decreases. This is just path loss. However, there's also a lot of other variation. And th these are these other large-scale propagation effects. In addition to this, um, Wi-Fi uh, waves also interfere with each other. So you can see in this bottom image here, Blue represents a weak signal, and red represents a strong signal. And you can see the wave interference. This is just for one room. In addition to this, uh, Wi-Fi signals also undergo temporal variations. Um, this is caused by people walking around, or even a car driving by, or a microwave running. Um, you can see this diagram here shows four different Wi-Fi signals, their strengths plotted over time. And in the um, blue signal, the t second from the top, you can see that there's a bump at the beginning. And this is when someone walked in front of the router. So you can see that there's a lot of temporal variations caused by uh, numerous different um, causes. Um, despite the disadvantages with Wi-Fi networks, I was able to use them um, to determine a user's location. Um, I created an um, Android app that runs on a smartphone. And because of this, it doesn't require any special hardware. And it overcomes the signal instabilities, which I just discussed, uh, with a technique called Wi-Fi fingerprinting. So a calibration fingerprint consists of the means and standard deviations of the Wi-Fi signal strengths in a given room in a building. So take this room here. There are some Wi-Fi signals that are strong and some that are weak. Now if we move to a different room, the signals that were strong here may be weak there, and the signals that are weak here may be strong there. Um, so you can see how each room in a building has a distinct Wi-Fi fingerprint. Um, and because here you can see that um, with taking all the, um, the variability in Wi-Fi signal and, and signals into account, you can see that their distributions tend to be normally distributed. So I treat them as Gaussian distributions. So my system design consists of two stages, a calibration and a navigation stage. During the calibration stage, my system creates one of these Wi-Fi fingerprints for each room in a building. Um, and they receive signal power of multiple signals are collected over time. And, and their, their, their means and standard deviations are stored. Then during the navigation stage, a user, um, the system measures Wi-Fi signals, and it matches it to the calibration data. And using that technique, it can determine a user's position. Now, the conventional approach for matching the calibration and navigation data is a nearest neighbor algorithm. And this selects a calibration fingerprint that's 
closest to the measured Wi-Fi signals by min mi minimizing the Euclidean distance between their means. So this doesn't use everything that we know from uh, that we ha all the information that we have from Wi-Fi wi from Wi-Fi fingerprint because we also know how spread out they are. So my approach is a maximum likelihood algorithm. And this selects a calibration fingerprint whose Gaussian distributions most likely produce the measured Wi-Fi signals. And it maximizes this probability here, which is a product of all of the um, distributions from each Wi-Fi signal. So here's an example where, where maximum likelihood algorithm would perform better than nearest neighbor. You can see each of these colored scatter plots represents a different store in a mall. And the X and Y axes are two different signal strengths, um, two different Wi-Fi signals. Um, of course, you'll be working with a lot more of it, more than this. But um, and the goal, what my system has to do is determine which location the mystery point is at. Now, the nearest neighbor algor algorithm would have incorrectly matched the location to fountain because it's closest. However, if you take the spread into account, you can see that maximum likelihood would correctly classify it, um, the user's location, as a GNC store. Um, so I implemented my uh, my system as an Android app. And I tested it on my Samsung Galaxy Tab 2. And you can see the image on the left is using it during the calibration stage. And the image on the right is um, what it looks like during the navigation stage. And I tested my app in two different locations, um, a home environment and a business environment. So first, the home environment. This is a floor plan of my house. Each of the green dots is where I took a calibration fingerprint. So I went to each of these rooms, and I averaged the Wi-Fi signals, um, signals over time and space by walking in slow circles. Um, and over multiple uh, over a certain amount of time, and so the total calibration time took half an hour, and I was working with 23 different Wi-Fi sources, and then to test my system, I randomly selected 75 test points throughout the house, and I would see whether or not it, my, my system would correctly match me to my location. So here are my results. The y-axis is the probability of um, of success, and the x-axis is time, because how the the navigation stage works. Um, my, um, the system scans for Wi-Fi every second, and it reads the Wi-Fi signals, er, si signal strengths every second. Um, so after the first second, uh, both algorithms uh, achieved about a 60 or 70 percent success rate. But then as more time passed, more signal strengths were read, and they were averaged together. And so error was eliminated, and after five seconds, the maximum likelihood algorithm achieved a 100 percent success rate. Then I tested um, my system at a shopping mall. You can see this is the forefront of the, of the mall. Each of the green dots is where I took a calibration fingerprint. It took me about an hour to calibrate the entire mall. I was working with 176 different Wi-Fi signals. Um, and then the, each of the red dots um, is a position where I took a test point. So I randomly selected these throughout the mall. And here are the results of the shopping mall. You can see that after one second, the maximum likelihood algorithm had a um, success rate in the 90s, which is pretty impressive that after one second, it could find the user's location. And then as time passed, after five seconds, the maximum likelihood had a 100% success rate. So um, to conclude, I developed an indoor positioning system that because it uses Wi-Fi fingerprinting, um, it can run on a smartphone, and it doesn't require any special hardware. It's easy, to, quick and easy to calibrate and easy to use. It can correctly determine a user's location within five seconds. Its um, use of maximum likelihood classification gives better results than the conventional nearest neighbor approach. And it's also ideal for navigating public buildings, because how my app works, it displays a floor plan of the building that the user is in, with a red dot showing their location. As they move throughout the building, the red dot automatically updates to show their location. So future work, I'm working on integrating my system with um, inertial navigation using smartphone sensors. And I also hope to speed up the calibration stage. And this concludes my presentation. Are there any questions?